And welcome once again to Baptiste Orthodontics Stadium. This is Mark Barchi, the voice of the Mustangs and Sports Information Director here at Wakaiva High School. I'll be joined in a moment by Neil Fisher from the Apopka Chief. And we are getting ready for the Mayor's Cup, or as we affectionately like to call it, the Tater Bowl. The Blue Darters visiting the Mustangs in our annual season-ending tradition. This is always the very last game of the football season. We alternate with Apopka with who hosts it. Apopka is coming off of a thriller from earlier this week uh, where they had to do their makeup game from what was canceled for Hurricane Ian. And now they are ready to play their second game in essentially four days, only three whole days between each of those games. So we'll see what Apopka's stamina has cut out to be, but it was a thriller. They won by one point on a game-winning kick earlier in the week against Seminole to take that 24-23 victory and improve to 7-2. and two. Once again, we would like to welcome everyone to Baptiste Orthodontic Stadium as our players take midfield for the coin toss. And we have Dr. Baptiste with us at midfield to participate as our ceremonial coin toss leader. And we'll take this opportunity during the coin toss to recognize our members of the Central Florida Officials Association. Referee Mitch Fazio, umpire Jonathan Stewart, linesman John Monsieur, line judge Rodney Brown, back judge A.J. Thomas, and clock operator Jack Kural. We thank them for their dedicated service to our high school athletic programs and join them along with our participating schools reminding everyone to make great sportsmanship a part of this and every athletic competition. The Blue Darters have won the toss and deferred to the second half. That means the Mustangs will have the opening possession of tonight's game. For those of you who are joining us online, we'd like to welcome you to Baptiste Orthodontic Stadium, whether you are watching us on our YouTube channel, at Wakaiva Sports, the NFHS Network, or Varsity Sports Network Orlando. If you are here in the stadium and you have friends and family back on the other side of Apopka or anywhere in the world and they would like to join us live from Baptiste Orthodontic Stadium, all you have to do is let them know that we are broadcasting not one, not two, but three different places tonight. We are live on our own YouTube channel, Wakaiva Sports. We are live on NFHS Network and we are live on Varsity Sports Network Orlando as the game of the week. So once again, welcome to Baptiste Orthodontic Stadium again. I'm Mark Barchi, Neil Fisher is here with me, and we have quite a show for you tonight. Of course, we just finished our senior night festivities. Again, Apopka is coming off of a big win, earning their district championship and punching their ticket to the top half of the bracket uh, for their regional playoff run. Wakaiva, meanwhile, we thought was statistically eliminated from the playoffs uh, after last week's loss, but it, or excuse me, two weeks ago, but it turns out that they are not statistically eliminated. Um, it, things could still shake out for a seventh place wild card bid. As we welcome to the field our guests for tonight's game from Apopka High School, the Blue Darters. <laughs> Meanwhile, Wakaiva at four and five is looking to even out and end the season on 500 and officially punch their ticket to the playoffs as we welcome to the field your Kaiba High School Mustangs. So over the last time of season 16, Wakaiva takes the field. Again, Wakaiva is trying to claw their way back into the playoffs. Uh, if they are able to do that, they would be a wild card, and so that means that their quarterfinal round would be on the road. Apopka, meanwhile, is really just jostling for position among the district champions. Apopka knows without a doubt that they are going to be in the playoffs. The only question is what seed, and so certainly, even though Wakaiva is a team that is going to end the season either 5-5 five and five or 4-6, and six, um, Wakaiva has a very strong strength of schedule, and so Apopka knows that this game matters for them as well. Of course, it matters for the team, for the in terms of crosstown pride, as they look to take the Mayor's Cup back home, and it also matters potentially in terms of playoff placement because a win or a loss against a school with the schedule strength of Wakaiva could make a difference 
to those final rankings that the FHSAA produces in cooperation with Max Preps. So I want to bring into the broadcast Neil Fisher, who has been joining me all season and indeed these last 16 years as we get ready to put a cap on the regular season for the 16th time here at Baptiste Orthodontic Stadium tonight. Well, thank you again, Mark. And you pretty much went over all the storylines. Of course, uh, this is the Tater Bowl, the Mayor, Mayor's Cup officially called between the two crosstown rivals, five miles approximately apart. Popka, of course, the older school over 100 years. A lot of tradition, three state championships in this century. A string of 25 consecutive playoff appearances over two different qualification formats. And they're very, uh, one of those teams that in about 90% of the sports, they always seem to, at the very least, be contending for a playoff position with Kaiba, even though 16 years old. Now, uh, compared to Wakaiva, still the newer school and an opportunity for them to flex their muscles, get some respect around town. Of course, Apopka, as Mark mentioned, in the playoffs as we get ready for the kickoff. And this will be Michael Wells. And we are underway with the 16th annual Mayor's Cup. It's going to be a touchback. Michael Wells puts the opening kickoff into the end zone. That will come out to the 20, and the Mustangs will have their first offensive possession of the game from there. So, Mark, uh, as you mentioned, in the way it should be, the Tater Bowl, the Crosstown rivalry, with playoff implications, Apopka clinched the district. District 4M2 with their victory over Sanford last week. Wakaiva needs to win tonight to get into the playoffs. Currently the number seven seed as Weathers slams up the middle. And Terrell Good Weathers yardage. gets the offense underway for the night. And he has the ball out to the 30-yard line. It is good for 10 yards and just enough for Mustang. First down. So couldn't ask for a better start, Mark. 10 yards, first down as you called it. And, of course, the second play. Again, another rush. Actually losing a yard. Well, there's again on the carry, picks up three, and that'll bring up second and seven. Okay. And quick, no huddle or minimal huddle as we get the screen to Tyrell Ganey for a short pickup. And so your starting lineup for Wakaiba, the same as they've been all year, up front, left to right, Edison Edmond, Howie St. Molest, Malik Enriquez, Jaze Valentine, Josiah Mangiello, all seniors. Tyree Davis takes the snap under center and gets it off just in time. One-on-one -on -one down that corner and nothing doing. An incomplete pass. Now a little contact there, but the officials rule that it's clean. Pass intended for Cooper is incomplete. Malachi Davey on the coverage for the darter defense. And that'll bring up third and six for the Mustangs from their own 34-yard line. First third down conversion attempt of the game for either team. Of course, Ty Tyrell Weathers, the all-everything running back, the pounding, bruising running back, along with uh, some flash and dash. He lines up behind center with Kyber running the one-back set. Your wide receivers, Tyrell Ganey, Joshua Barrett, Anthony Gay, and Keval Cooper. So first third down attempt of the game from Wakaiba's own 34-yard line. Excuse me, the no good, and now the punt. High snap, that's Noah Putman, and the Waka uh, Popka special teams take advantage, and the first miscue of the game goes to a Popka. Snap to Putman is high, and that will turn the ball over on downs to the darters deep in Mustang territory, just outside the red zone at the 22-yard line. Apopka takes over from there with first and 10. And Apopka's starting lineup, of course, under Jeff Ralston. This is his third year taking over for the very successful Ron Darlington. We'll get you those starting lineups in just a moment. Uh, of course, under Darlington, the single wing, over and over, they've gone to more of a spread offense, and that's their big running back in terms of the carries. That's Zeldrick Roberts. Roberts on the carry. That takes the ball inside the 15 to the 14 yard line for a gain of seven, brings up second and three. Roberts rushing for 536 yards, 3.7 yards per carry. 
And uh, it's really a running back by committee. He does take most of them. The completion to Tito, Sh to Trey Muldew. Pass is complete to Nathan Jenkins and the stop is made for the Mustangs. So your starting lineup for Apopka while we got a break. Left to right up front, Tay Ty Ray, number 67. DeAndre Middlebrook, 72. Zaire Warner, number 70. Ethan Corkis, number 58. Charvis Williams, number 68. Behind center, that's Tyson Davidson. We'll get you his stats. Roberts lines up behind him. He took the first carry for close to a first down. And this is... Number 12, Davidson. Tyson Davidson into the end zone for a seven yard Apopka touchdown. And just that quickly, three plays, 34 yards, uh, roughly 30 yards, and Apopka takes a six nothing lead, 9.32 remaining in the 2022 edition of the Tater Bowl. Your wide receivers to close out the starting lineup, Isaac Knight, number 10, Nathan Jenkins, the third, number three, Kingston Shaw, number 18, and Jordan Wright, number 19, and in now doing the kicking. Is Hayden Kosicki. And the holder, on the play. holder is Antoine Robinson. Prior to the snap, illegal substitution is called against the Mustangs. Half the distance to the goal and a replay of the try. It was 9.32 left. Apopko tried the PAT. And the kick is good from Kosicki. 7 0 Apopka in the 2022. Mayor's Cup slash Tater Bowl. Three plays. Kosicki's try is good, and the Darters lead 7-0 with 9 minutes, 32 seconds remaining in the first quarter after starting from the 22-yard line. So Wakaiba will try their second possession. And this one's going to be deep in their own territory. All the way back at the five yard line. So if you've been following Wakaiba, you know this. If this is your first time, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Tonight on the Wakaiba campus right next to 429 on the southeast side of a pop cup. Mentioned their starting lineup. Now the darter defense up front, Payne Lorenzo, Trevon Williams, Jaden Floyd, Kevon Call. As Bennett in motion out of the one back set, the pitch to Weathers. And he's hop skips and picks up some good yardage on first down, about five yards. And that'll bring up second and five. Darrell Weathers picks up four yards for the Mustangs on the opening play of this possession. That takes the ball to the nine yard line and brings up second and six. So the rest of the Apopka defense, uh, the linebackers, Malik Nicholson, Trey Muldew, and Rashad, Rashad Watson as the defense holds tough and Davis goes down. Tyree, Tyree Davis on the QB keep. Loss of one on the play, and it brings up third and seven for the Mustangs from their own eight-yard line. So Wakaiba now deep in their own territory, and... and Apop Apopka secondary, uh, your corners, Davey, Malachi Davey, Jordan Wright, and the safeties, Marcus Grant and Antoine Robinson. 
7-0 lead for Apopka. Caught a break, a bad snap on the punt. They rec Apokaiba recovered the fumble, but deep in their own territory. Apopka three plays later made it 7-0. And now Wakaiba facing that hole right from the beginning and nothing doing as Weathers tries that left side. Terrell Weathers on the carry for the Mustangs picks up a gain of two, and that will bring up fourth and five from the Mustangs 10-yard line. So, Neil, thanks to the superior kickoff and Wakaiba's inability to return it, uh, Wakaiva now going three and out is going to be facing an uphill, uh, uphill battle of field position. Yeah, kicking from the old, from their own from Wakaiva's end zone, Noah Putman. This time it is a good snap, and he gets rid of it. But it's going to be well. It was short, but it does take a Wakaiva bounce. Still, Apopka takes over for the second time on a pop, on their own. Uh, Apopka takes over for the second time on Wakaiva's side of the field. Noah Putman's punt goes out of bounds just inside Wakaiva territory at the 45-yard line. Apopka takes over from there with first and 10. So Wakaiva's defense. James up front, Davian Watkins, James Mixon, Omar Hayes, and Sarah Edwards as they run the 4-3, the, or excuse me, the 4-2-5. Linebackers, Kadar Cargell and Aaron McCray. And now dropping back, that is, that is Davidson. Jordan Wright has the catch, and on the very first play of the drive, the Darters with a 45-yard touchdown completion. And just like that, 13 to nothing, four plays for Popka in this game that Wakaiva has to win to earn a playoff berth. 7.20 remaining in the first quarter. Jordan Wright, the recipient, as you heard Mark say. Mark also our public address announcer. And so now Kasiki in, and no problems. Kick down, kicks up, kicks good. Hayden Kasiki has the try for the Darters, and that will extend their lead to 14-0 with seven minutes, 20 seconds remaining in the first quarter. So, Neil, uh, that field position that we talked about yep, a moment yep. ago turns out to be a real difference maker as Apopka made a great play selection there and got an open safety. Of course, uh, Wright is actually listed on the roster as a defensive back, uh, but he clearly knew what he was doing in the secondary on that play as Apopka yeah, found right. an uncovered spot right in the middle of the field, and he had nothing but open air in front of him to pick up the 45-yard touchdown. Yeah, Wright... Uh, actually uh, plays both offense and defense. A cornerback on the defensive unit. So now uh, Wakaiba will see if they can do any better with this kickoff and get some better field position. Yeah, and this is uh, as good a start as you can uh, imagine for a Popka. Kaziki's kick away and it's gonna go straight into the end zone. Kickoff results in a touchback. The Mustangs will start from their own 20-yard line with their next offensive possession. So Wakaiva so far does not have any great answers for the Apopka defense. We, of course, know that Apopka's defense is renowned, uh, as it often is in a perennial fashion, but particularly this year. We saw a lot of that in the game against Seminole last week. And if Wakaiva was hoping that the fact that Apopka is playing their second game in four days was maybe going to start off with a worn out team well they are going to be disappointed because it looks like Apopka is as rested as ever that's Weathers Terrell Weathers opens up the drive for the Mustangs and he has a gain of about seven yards that brings up second and three for the Mustangs from their own 
the 27-yard line. So Wakaiba's defense is not quite as good in Coach Schwartz's opinion as Weather tries that left side again. I believe that's his fifth carry, but still giving up only a total of 147 yards. That's about 15 per game. Weather's on the carry. Bryson Bowman has the stop for the darters, but not before he picks up three yards for Mustang. First down. So Wakaiva moves the chains there. Actually, make it four yards. The Apopka defense giving up 16 points per game. And really, Coach Schwartz talked at uh, length about Apopka's defense when I uh, we had our usual meeting on Monday afternoon. And he said, you know, they're just as talented. They're just as skilled. They understand the game as well as last year's. The problem is, number one, last year's team was the best probably in 20 years. As good as Apopka's defense has been over the course of the last 20, 25 years as Davis lines up the offense in the one-back set. That's Weathers. And we're going to get penalties. Uh, Prior to the snap, offsides called against the Darter defense. That's five-yard donation to the Mustang cause. And a replay of first down. The, the Apopka defense last year stood out first among equals as Weathers. And it's dropped. Drops. Scramble. And gained about five yards when uh, he lost the ball. It is going to remain with Wakaiva. Weathers man. manages to pick up the Mustangs' own fumble and will actually pick up a few yards on the carry. Second down and three coming up for Wakaiva. Well, that was a near disaster for the Mustangs, and honestly, I didn't even see a particularly rough contact from no, no, the Darters. That ball just came loose from the senior running back, Terrell Weathers. Well, fortunately, so he redeemed himself, though. He caught his own ball and so managed the, to get there before Lorenzo Payne, who was ready to cash in for the Darters. So Wakaiva at the 37. Weathers takes another handoff, pulls ahead. Some contact about two yards short of the first down. But continued to move. That was actually Hand off to Tyree Phileas, who gets a little bit of extra yardage after contact. Take the ball all the way out to the 43-yard line for a gain of six. And that takes us to just about the midpoint of the first quarter. And that means it's time for our first official timeout. Darters with a 14-0 lead with five minutes, 54 seconds remaining in the first quarter here at Baptist Orthodontic Stadium. And to conclude my thought, I mean, and to conclude that thought about the defense, again, uh, this defense is just as good as any other in terms of talent, skill, giving up only 16 points. But the difference between this one and last year's is simply the lack of experience. Mark? Baptist Orthodontics and Dentistry for Kids is proud to sponsor Wakaya Mustang Athletics. With three convenient offices in Apopka, Orlando, and Windermere, it's never been easier to get the beautiful smile you've always wanted. Consultations are free with flexible payment options. Always affordable, even today. Visit BaptisteOrthodontics.com. Back, back to Baptist Orthodontic Stadium, home of the Wakaiva Mustangs. They're facing an uphill battle early. 14 to nothing deficit against the Apopka Budars, their cross rival. They keep it on the ground and some good maneuvering, churning. And looks like uh, it's, it's going to be about a five-yard gain. Tyree Phileas picks up four on the carry to bring up second and six from the Mustangs' own 48-yard line. So, so far on this drive, Neil, the Mustangs have not pulled out anything particularly dazzling, but they have certainly been more effective than they were on their previous drive against this starter defense. Yeah, and speaking of the defense, if you just joined us during the break, talked about the difference between this year's and last year's, just a lack of experience. They run the 4-3 now under Coach Rawson, as I believe that's Bennett slashing, and he'll get another first down, about 13 yards. Anthony Gay the third on the reception for the Mustangs, and he makes his way to the sideline, picking up a Mustang first down. First time Wakaiva's been in Apopka territory, 2022 edition of the Tater Bowl. That's the annual matchup between the two local schools in Apopka. Ball all the way down to the Apopka 44. So that's a nine-yard gain, and the first time Wakaiva's been in Apopka territory. Back to the ground now as they try going to that left side, stringing it out. They're going to have some success. 
And never actually turned straight up field, but Tyree Phillies on the carry for the Mustangs. He is shoved out of bounds. And the ball is spotted near first down yardage. But there's a flag on the play. Holding. Called against the Mustang offense. That's a 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. And a replay of first down. And we've talked about it all season, Mark. You want to you take it? Or penalties, I? penalties, penalties. Although I will at least give Wakaiva credit here so far, and I don't want to jinx it, but so far we have seen Wakaiva stay clean during dead ball situations uh, and have not been giving up free yardage. Holding, I've always considered, is just kind of part of the game. You zigged when you should have zagged. Um, you're going to pick up some holding penalties. Uh, but, a sort, of course, you want to keep that mental focus and clean up those plays as well. Pushes the ball back to midfield right at the 50, first and 15. Wakaiva needs to win to get into the playoffs, and that certainly is going to help. The offensive line collapses, and powering in is at a pocket defensive line. And Davis gets back to the line of scrimmage, but really a wasted play. Tyree Davis on the carry. Jaden Floyd stops him from behind with some help from Lorenzo Payne. No gain or maybe gain of one on the play. That brings the ball back to midfield for second. And, and, I, say, and I say that's a wasted play because the holding penalty, again, put him in a 15-yard-to-go situation, and that's an obvious passing situation. Uh, you can't open up the playbook. The defensive line knows what's coming. So with 340 remaining... Davis takes the snap, drops back, finds his man, Bennett, slides off the tackle, spins, and gets the first down yardage. Pass is complete to Joshua Bennett for the same first down. So Wakaiva. Marcus Grant has the stop for Apopka before the Mustangs move the chains into darter territory at the 32-yard line. So a 30, an 18-yard gain for Wakaiva. Certainly that's got to make them feel a lot better, traveling 14 to nothing. And now off the right tackle and guard, slashing and slamming. Tyree Davis on the QB keep. And he will move the chains again as Wakaiva is into the darter red zone at the 18-yard line for a Mustang first down. So two plays now, 32 yards. Wakaiva ripping off significant chunks of yardage here at Baptiste Orthodontic Stadium. Wakaiva again comes into this contest, the seventh seed as of now in the FHSAA rankings. Of course, that system is based on the records, the opponent's record and the opponent's opponent's record. One back set with an H back, and we're not going to get the play off. Flags, Flag on the play. Flags of plenty. Wakaiva giving up two touchdowns on four plays and find themselves in a 14 to nothing hole, not even five minutes into this ball game, the 2022 edition of the Mayor's Cup. Prior to the snap, Taylor offside. Ball. It's called against the darter defense. That's a five-yard penalty from the previous spot. And a replay of first down. So Apopka doing the unexpected. Three penalties already, two coming on this drive. Ball moved down to the Apopka 13, Wakaiba's first scoring drive. And they're back with the same formation, H back and one back set, that's Weathers. As he strings it out to the left side, using his left side of the line, picks up about four yards, keeps that ball matriculating down the field. Terrell Weathers on the carry, stopped by Marcus Grant of the Darter defense, that puts the ball at the eight yard line of Darter territory, and it is enough for Mustang. First down, first five, and goal now for Wakaiba. Five yard gain for Wakaiba. Now we're starting to see the Wakaiba game, not necessarily the rushing, although that is part of it, but more of the taking your time, lining it up, the very deliberate pace. Uh, Popka, much quicker pace. Hand off to Weathers, slams into that line on the right side. Terrell Weathers up the middle push, for trying, short game. Trying to push that line ahead. Won't defensive line does not give up. Payne, Williams, Floyd, and Call holding steady. Ball spotted at the four-yard line. Second and goal from there. So one-yard gain for Weathers. And second and goal. Wakaiba 
desperately needing a touchdown, trailing 14 to nothing. Now, certainly the last thing you want to do is go down three scores in the first quarter. And uh, Wakaiva has an opportunity here to make it just one score. So one back set with the H back again. Weather sl- slides right, goes hops back to his left. Another short game, but again, you don't need much when you're inside the five, two yards. Terrell Weathers once again up the middle for the Mustangs. That puts the ball at the three-yard line for a gain of one, third and goal. So now you are in a situation you can't just get one yard. Uh, By the way, Weathers comes into this game. 1,250 yards in total over nine games. That's 139 per game. Of course, he started off the season with six consecutive 100-yard rushing games. Right now, though, we only need three to cut this lead to 14-7. to And Weathers is not going to get in this time. They tried to run it behind the guard. Terrell Weathers on the carry for the Mustangs, and he is stopped by Ferguson and Muldrow, among others. That will bring up fourth and goal from the two-yard line. So, Neil, an interesting conundrum for Wakaiva. Wakaiva's had inconsistent kicking all year. uh, Yeah, well, I'd say they, they did not hesitate. Schwartz sent the team out right away. So it's all or nothing. Here comes Davis on the QB keep, trying to pick up a block, and he does. It's a touchdown. Terry Davis into the end zone for a Mustang. Touchdown. And that cuts the lead to 14 to 6 on the last play of the second quarter. And Nathan Frenchley in for the PAT, no problems. And Wakaiva needed a field goal, a uh, touchdown, and gets the job done. 14 to 7 deficit to Apopka. Frenchley on the try, and it connects. And the Mustangs have cut the darter lead to 14 7 as time expires on the first quarter. Seven point ball game here from Baptiste Orthodontic Stadium in week 11 as we wrap up season 16 of Mustang football in the Mayor's Cup. So back to live action here at Baptist Orthodontic Stadium, the Tater Bowl 2022 edition, otherwise known officially as the Mayor's Cup. Neil Fisher, Mark Barchi, thank you for joining us on this Friday night. The Crosstown Rivals, Apopka from the northeast side, Wakaiva on the southeast side. Again, Baptist Orthodontic Stadium this year's site. Wakaiva just scoring a 95-yard drive, 14 plays. And the kickoff to- now away. For the Mustangs, courtesy of Fritchley. It's going to be returned. So a little bit better than average as uh, Popka, the Blue Dyers, take over at their own 31-yard line. Antoine Robinson on the return. Noah Putnam and Marcus Conyers team up for the tackle on special teams. That spots the ball at the 31-yard line, and the darters will take over from there with first and 10. As we begin the second quarter, Apopka earned the playoff berth, winning District 4M2, a thrilling 24-23 victory over Seminole on Tuesday night. And now they'll go to work. Robinson in that one-back set, hands off to Roberts. Excuse me, that was Davidson, the quarterback, hands off to Roberts, a short game. Zeldrick Roberts on the carry for the darters. 
And that puts the ball at the 32-yard line for a short gain. Second and a long nine coming up for Apopka. Apopka now comes in. They are ranked number two in the Region 1 Class 3M standings, number three overall, excuse me, Class 4M, uh, the entire class, the entire state. And the oddity of that is, as I said, they beat Seminole, but they are actually one position behind Seminole in both of those rankings as Roberts bowls ahead, trying that left side. He'll gain four. Zeldick Roberts again on the carry. That puts the ball up to the 34-yard line for a gain of two. Third and seven coming up for Apopka. So critical third down play, even though we're early in the second quarter, Wakaiva giving up two touchdowns right off the bat, four plays. Found themselves down 14 to nothing, trying to regain their momentum, gain their sea legs, if you will, and now a penalty. Laundry on the field. Flag on the play, offside. It's called against the Mustang defense. Five-yard donation to the Darter cause and a replay up third down. And again, Mark, we talked about it all season, brought it up earlier after a penalty. Penalties have been killer all year for Wakaiva. And even in games like this one where they're not committing them, uh, against Horizon, they committed 22. It was like a third of the plays they ran, they committed penalties. But this is only their second, but it comes at such a critical time as Mark just said, third and two now. And they're going to overcome it this time as Roberts, nowhere to go. The defense collapses on them. Seldrick Roberts on the carry. Damian Watkins on the stop. And it's fourth down. Loss of one on the carry. Fourth and three coming up for Popka from their own 38. And uh, here comes the punting team. Took a few seconds for Coach Ralston to send out that punting team. Yeah, this seems like a no-brainer here, though. I mean, I, I get it. It's fourth and three. You could come up with, you know, the razzle-dazzle here, but when you're up by one score and you're this deep in your own territory, why risk a major momentum shift? Of course, Coach Rawson, that's Jeff Rawson taking over three seasons when Ron Darlington moved on to Alabama. He the Mustangs request their first timeout of the first half. Of course, Coach Darlington since has returned to Florida coaching the DeLand Bulldogs this year. But De uh, before he left Apopka, took him to three state championships, took him to the final six different times. And now, of course, Apopka looking for a 25th straight playoff appearance. That's starting way back in 1998 over two different formats. And as the Mustangs take that time out to try to regroup ahead of what is likely a darter punt, we'll take a break here at Baptiste Orthodontic Stadium. 9.17 to go in the second quarter. Darters up 14-7. Dr. Elizabeth Davis with Orlando Health Jewett Orthopedic Institute is honored to be the team physician for Wakaiva High School. On the field and off, they provide a full spectrum of orthopedic services and a multitude of specialties and subspecialties from hip, knee, and shoulder experts to orthopedic traumatology and more. Offering proven leading edge techniques and technologies, Orlando Health Jude at Orthopedic Institute provides patients world-class personalized care from a number of convenient locations throughout Central Florida. Learn more at orlandohealth.com slash sports. Orlando Health, choose well. Welcome back to Baptiste Orthodontic Stadium, and now the Darters will go for it on fourth down and get it. So I'm not sure about the timeout strategy there from Wakaiva, because I thought Apopka was going to kick it, but that timeout that Wakaiva took also gave Apopka a chance to regroup, and they decided to go for it, to go for the gutsy play there, and there we had uh, Zeldrick Roberts picks up a gain of four, and the Darters convert fourth down. First and ten now from their own 44-yard line. So the drive is extended. Yeah, and talked about Coach Rawson replacing, taking over for Coach Darlington before we went to that break. Uh, another note, Coach Rawson, of course, did uh, coach at Osceola for five years, took him to a, actually a couple of state championship finals. As down goes Roberts this time, submerged by that defensive line. Roberts goes down, courtesy of Bennett, Watkins, and Cargill. 
And that'll be a loss of two on the play. Second and a long 12 now coming up from the Darters' own 41-yard line. So Coach Schwartz going with the blitz, Cargill a linebacker, and that time it pays off. And as you heard Mark say, the ball now at the 35. Looking for an opportunity in the secondary, doesn't have one. And, and he goes Robert, down. Roberts trying to dance his way away, but the defensive line would have none of it. Davison gets sacked by Bennett, and that pulls the ball all the way back to the 37-yard line for a loss of five. Now third and 16 coming up for the Darters. So two plays in a row result in TFLs, and you hear uh, the little bit of the crowd noise that we have in the background as the Mustang fans are now getting excited for that defense, the defensive line turning up the heat after a disastrous first couple of drives, now seem to have found their rhythm. Roberts back, he's got a man open, but under throws, that was Pass intended for Noah Morgan, falls incomplete. Jaden Smith was on the coverage, and yeah, it was well behind Noah Morgan. Uh, yeah, so uh, you could say both ways, uh, caught a break there, they had a wide open wide receiver, uh, Smith beat him cleanly, but then Roberts underthrew the ball. And I just wanted to finish the reason I bring up Coach Ralston. Uh, now, of course, it doesn't matter what kind of overcame it, but that is one thing that you're now seeing under Coach Ralston is actually the, I just say, the risk-taking. I uh, saw that a lot under Darlington on fourth downs, and Ralston has carried that on. And this ball... Nowhere near number seven, that's Ganey. He gets away from it. So the Wells on the punt, and that will not be returned by the Mustangs after taking a modest darter bounce. Wakaiva will start with first and 10 from their own 30 yard line. So this game started with Apopka scoring on four plays, 14 points against Wakaiva. Since then, they have not been able, they've only got one first down. Oh, excuse me, they're going to put it at the 33. That's where Apopka touched it, even though it rolled a little bit further past that. So, And, okay. of course, being able to hold Apopka has given the offense some time and ability to find its sea legs. Weathers opens up the drive. That's call on the stop, and that's a gain of two on the play that brings up second and eight from the Mustangs' own 35-yard line. So Wakaiva, of course, it behooves them when they have a more deliberate pace. Uh, you see more and more now, even if there is a huddle, a quicker pace in terms of getting the snap off. Wakaiva, I would still say, is what you'd see traditionally maybe even 20 years ago at all levels. And now Davis... Steps back, dances around, avoids a couple of tackles, and he's going to get some forward progress and some big-time forward progress. Midfield, 40, spins around, and finally goes down at the 36. Tyree Davis breaks away from what could have been a sack and instead turns it into a 20-plus yard gain, and Austin first down. Davis taking the ball all the way to the Apopka 36-yard line. And now twice, Wakaiva has ventured into Apopka territory. And we're going to get the midway break, water break, here in the second quarter. 14-7 to is your score from Baptiste Orthodontic Stadium. Apopka with that lead. This is the 2022 Tater Bowl, or if you prefer, Mayor's Cup between Wakaiva and Apopka. Always affordable, even today. Visit BaptisteOrthodontics.com to schedule a free consultation for braces or clear aligners. Dr. Baptiste is proud to sponsor Wakaiva Athletics and welcomes you to Baptiste Orthodontics Stadium, home of the Wakaiva Mustangs. And welcome back to Baptiste Orthodontics Stadium. Neil Fisher, Mark Barchi with the call on this night. Friday night, a beautiful night for football, Mark. And Wakaiva trying to tie this game up. They trail 14 to seven, a rough start, giving up two touchdowns on the first two possessions. Now they found their sea legs, first and 10 from the 36, and that's Weathers rounding out on that right side, and he'll pick up six, seven yards. Terrell Weathers 
breaks through the initial defensive line, finally caught from behind by Watson and Robinson, but not before picking up a gain of seven. That brings up second and three for Wakaiva from the Darter 27-yard line. They get the 28. So this game started off, Apopka scored those two touchdowns on four plays, 67 yards. Since then, they have not been able to get a first down. Well, one first down as Weathers takes the pitch, and he motors ahead. He'll get the first down, and the possession continues for Wakaiva. Terrell Weathers on the carry. That puts the ball at the 24-yard line. And it's good for a Mustang first down. And that play, you're not looking to do anything fancy. The objective there is just get the get the two yards, get the first down, keep the chains moving. To quote Hank Stram, keep the ball matriculating down the field. And now Wakaiva lines up again with the H back motion. Hand off to Weathers, and this time he swarmed right after getting that handoff, and he'll take a loss. Weathers on the carry. Trevon Williams, along with Call, have the stop for the TFL, and that brings the ball back. Spotted at the 22-yard line, and it'll be second and 13 for Wakaiva. Excuse me, 27-yard line for second and 13. So Wakaiva had things going for him in the right direction, moving that ball forward, getting large gains when they needed them, getting the shorter but keeping the chain moving, very efficient and productive, and then comes to an end when that defensive line broke in and takes Weathers down. They'll have to make up those three yards. Davis out of the shotgun, turns right, finds his receiver, and that'll get you back to the line of scrimmage. That was Gay on the reception. Gay on the reception for the Mustangs. Marcus Grant in on the stop, and that will bring the ball back to the original line of scrimmage, plus two more for a gain of five. Third and eight coming up for the Mustangs from the Darter 22-yard line. So uh, certainly a long way to go, eight. Uh, it's considered on the longer side for a first down, but certainly eight yards, much more manageable than 13. Two receivers on the near sideline, two on the far, one back set, no H back. Quick pass, three-step drop, completion, but taken down right away. Pass is complete to Tyrell Ganey, Marcus and he is Grant. stopped short of first down yardage by Marcus Grant, and it'll be fourth and three make it two for the Mustangs. So Neil, you saw there that Davis threw that ball just about a yard ahead of Ganey, which forced him to kind of adjust his momentum. He didn't have yeah. that forward motion making the catch and instead was you know stopped on a dime and that was not yeah, enough give, to power through there. Give Marcus Grant the safety though. He did have something to do with having to make that adjustment. So fourth and two. Critical play, handoff to Weathers. He No, it's not. Through. It's a QB keep. Now, QB Tyree keep Davis, Davis sneaks through and finds a lane for Mustang. First down. So Davis, again, uh, please remember we do not have spotters here in the high school level. Ball uh, spotted at the 12-yard line. Make it, and it'll be first and 10 for Wakaiva. So sometimes it's not always easy to see. There was that... Fake handoff, give Davis credit. He found just enough hole to turn his body sideways and pick up the first down. Strike that is on the 10 yard line, so it will be first and goal for Wakaiva. And, and this play is going to be whistled dead before it starts. That's also a six yard gain. Prior to the snap, false start. Called against the Mustangs. Five yard penalty from the previous spot and a replay of first down. Now first and goal from the 15. And now you have to get. 15 yards for the first down instead of 10. And again, that's what we said. Even in the games that Wakaiva has reduced its penalties, they still come at the most critical of times. Uh, you've gained some momentum. You've found your sea leg, so to speak, after a rough start, giving up the 14 to nothing lead. And that just, it pushes you five yards back. And now, not only do you have to regain that five yards, but you have to regain the momentum. So Davis lines them up, one back set, two receivers near, one right, 
He'll hand off to, I believe that's Phileas, who spins. And well, actually, that's Anthony Gay on okay. the carry. And that's good for a short gain. No, excuse me, that's actually a short loss for the Mustangs. Pulls the ball back to the 17-yard line and brings up second and goal. So yeah, Anthony Gay, normally a name that you hear associated with, uh, passing. with passing rather than rushing. Doesn't Although, work out for Wakaiva there as the darter defense is ready for that. Although Gay does run the ball uh, from time to time. Now second and 17 as you're Mark. Davis drops back, obvious passing situation. Rolls right, finds a man. That's Gay now. Slizzers off the tackle, motors ahead. And he'll have the ball down to the three-yard line. Anthony Gay on the catch for the Mustangs and stopped by Jordan Wright just short of the goal line. And that'll bring up third and goal from the Mustangs, or excuse me, from the Darters, four yard line. So Neil, uh, of course. 13 yard gain, Mark. Yes, 13 yard gain and th uh, third and goal from the three, uh, looks a, or four, looks a lot better than it did from the 14. Yeah, just, just a couple minutes ago after that penalty. And uh, you mentioned Gay in the passing game, and certainly there's where his value comes in. Uh, he was left wide open just to the right of the hash mark facing the field goals. So Wakaiva trying to tie this game up. They trail 14-7. to 7. 25 seconds remaining to hand off to Phileas. Weaves his way through. Tried to get in on a second effort. The defense holds. Tyree Phileas on the carry. Rashad Watson pushes him back just before reaching the goal line. And so that will bring up fourth and goal for the Mustangs. From the two-yard line. So things are getting interesting or are interesting. Got a timeout on the field with 19 seconds. 14 to 7 is the score in the 2022 Mayor's Cup, or if you prefer, the Tater Bowl. Of course, it's called the Mayor's Cup because the mayor, Brian Williams, hands out the mayor's hands out a cup, which was bought when the series started. 16 years ago to the winner. Wakaiva's won it four times. Of course, Apopka winning it 12 times. They did dominate for the first 10 years as Wakaiva uh, was trying to find its sea lake, so to speak, to make its way through the football world. They did win it four times or twice in a row. Since then, though, it's been all Apopka. Apopka now holding it. And again, fourth and goal from the two-yard line as Davis lines them up. He'll go one back set, H back. We're going to get a pass. Rolls right, throws low. Ball was caught, but there's also a flag. Pass is complete to Tyrell Ganey for Mustang. Touchdown. There is a penalty marker in the end zone. And it is a touchdown. So with 14 seconds remaining, Wakaiva, after the rough start, has equaled Wapapka with the two touchdowns, 14 to 13. If Fritchley can convert this PAT, we most likely will go into halftime, 14 to 14. And who would have thunk that after the first four offensive plays that Apopka ran, two touchdowns, 67 yards. Pass interference is called. Excuse me, off. Uh, I guess the target defense that is obviously not needed, and so the touchdown stands. 14 seconds remaining in the second quarter. So Fritz Leon to try to tie this game up, 14 to 13. He'll be kicking out of the hole from Jabari Smith, the DB, ball down, kicks up, and we are tied 14 to 14. No, we're not. Oh, it was wide. Wide right. right, and the Mustangs will trail by one. 14 to 13 is the score with 14 seconds to go in the half. So just when you thought, <laughs> Well, Kai was certainly playing much better here, but when you thought we were going to go into halftime tied at 14 to 14, uh, as they say in soccer, with Kaiba drawing level, just uh, obviously the momentum is on their side, but they didn't quite get all the momentum that they could have with the missed PAT. So that last drive took one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 12 plays covered 67 yards that goes along with the first touchdown drive which covered 95 yards in 14 plays so again last game of the season of course they always play these two teams Apopka and Wakaiva and that last game aka known as the Mayor's Cup or if you prefer informally the Tater Bowl playoff implications 
But Wakaiva, certainly the story has not changed, Mark. Uh, when they play mistake-free, they are dominating. They can move the ball. They give any team an A-plus challenge. But then they make the mistakes, and they lose that discipline. And that's why we're down by one point instead of being tied. Well, nevertheless, though, uh, you have to applaud the Mustangs' performance under pressure. Both scores have been fourth and goal with short yardage. And now that penalty, I, I believe there was actually a second penalty other than the pass interference because Wakaiva was doing that kickoff from Apopka's side of the field. So yeah. uh, that was enforced on the ensuing kickoff. Nevertheless, the kickoff is into the end zone for a touchback, and so that'll come out to the 20-yard line, and Apopka will have 14 seconds to do something with an 80-yard field. And, of course, Mark, we've talked about it all season. We've talked about penalties being part of that undisciplined nature that Wakaiba does play with, and it does seem to come in trends. Uh, it's not just the amount of penalties. They've had as many as 22 against Horizon. They've had as little as four against Edgewater. But part of that is also when they come. This is one of the few that's probably not going to hurt them too bad, uh, given that they just scored the touchdown in 14 seconds before halftime. That's Roberts. He'll take the ball to close out the second, the second quarter in the first half. Roberts so. on the carry, and that'll do it as no one tries to stop the clock. Time expires on the second quarter, and it is a one-point ball game. The Darters come out of the doors swinging as they went up 14-0, but the Mustangs have bounced back to make it a one-point ball game. 14-13 is the score at intermission here at Baptiste Orthodontic Stadium in the Mayor's Cup, the Tater Bowl for 2022, as we cap off season 16 of Mustang football. Halftime shows coming up next. And so a quick recap as we're waiting for that halftime show. As Mark said, 14 to nothing lead taken by Apopka. Scoring a fumble, allowed him to get the ball at Wakaiva's 22. Four plays later, uh, they score on the seven yard pass and then a 45 yard touchdown giving them that 14 to nothing lead. Four plays, 67 yards. Wakaiva answers with a 95, 14 yard play and a 67, nine yard play to take us to halftime with the 14 to 13 score. And now our halftime show. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to halftime. On behalf of Principal Lyle Hines, Directors Jeremy Langford and Mark Ellis, in the entire Apopka community, we bring you the 2022 Blue Daughter Marching Band. The Blue Daughter Band is under the field direction of Head Drum Major Ariana Young and Assistant Drum Majors Sharon Cotton, Corey Cotman, Ashley Murphy, and band colonels are Kinsey Walton, Lowry Richards, Caitlin Harrison, Tanner Reynolds, and Jordan Thompson. We would like to take a moment to thank Director, Director Josh Grosch-Nicholas and the entire Wekaiva Marching Band family for your outstanding camaraderie this evening. We are excited to showcase our complete halftime show at tonight's game and also at our annual music performance assessment being held tomorrow at Boone High School. We wish the very best to both the Marching Mustangs and the Blue Daughter Marching Band in your performances tomorrow. Tonight, we are thrilled to present the performance of the Shades of Latin Halftime Show featuring Sierra's sister, Santana's Novus, and Estancia, followed by our Apopka fight song. During the show, we will feature soloist Jose Orozco, Isaac Lewis, Clayton Reynolds, and Jay Curry. Drum majors, is your band ready? Ladies and gentlemen, sit back and relax. Here is your Blue Daughter Marching Band.
the direction of Mr. Joshua Grosticloss. The assistant director is Mr. Frank Taylor. The percussion instructor is Mr. Justin Eubanks, and the color guard instructor is Mr. Michael McKee. We would like to thank the generous donors who have supported the band program this year, including Bennett Road Automotive Service, Bowen Brothers Transportation, Central Florida Pulmonary Group, Orlando Import Auto Specialists, and Orlando Web Concepts. We'd also like to give a very special thanks to all of our seniors for their years of dedication and service to the marching band. Thank you, and we love you. And thank you to our wonderful audience and our esteemed guests for your love and support of the Wakaiva High School Marching Mustangs. Thank you to Mr. Taylor and the Mustang Marching Band, and we wish them all the best at their marching MPA tomorrow morning. Yeah. And for those of you here in the stadium, uh, first of all, we'd like to let you know that we have recovered a license or Nadia Harris, if that's you, come see us in the press box and we will reunite you with your ID and wallet. We'd also like to remind those of you here in the stadium that while we are not anticipating any inclement weather or other issues tonight, that we do remind you of our emergency procedures in the event that a stadium evacuation should be necessary. We would ask that you calmly and safely but quickly exit the stadium at the nearest possible exit point at the gates that you came in near the concession stand. If you do have a vehicle on site, please return to your vehicle and remain there as that is the safest place for you to be. If you do not have a vehicle available to return to, then the gym will be opened as a shelter. We appreciate your cooperation. And now we'll take you inside the press box here at Baptiste Orthodontic Stadium. As we get ready to start the second half, one point ball game. I'm Mark Barchi, the voice of the Mustangs and sports information director here at Wakaiva. These last 16 seasons, and Neil Fisher with me from the Apopka Chief, and you've been covering Wakaiva uh, since it opened as well. We have seen the evolution of this Mayor's Cup. Of course, for the first several seasons, it was not a competitive contest, and now we have seen over time that it has become something of a back and forth competition that is worthy of the crosstown rivalry and the Mayor's Cup that we're participating in here. And so uh, certainly Apopka has been more efficient, I think, with their offense. They have much fewer plays and one more point to show for it, whereas Wakaiva has been more of a traditional slog down the field. It's been effective, but the time of possession certainly uh, not the same, but not nearly as close as the score between these two teams. So, Mark, you could even go uh, one step further and say for both these teams, it was a half which had two halves. Uh, very unusual when you look at the stats. Wakaiva actually 150 total yards compared to Apopka's 78. Wakaiva's run 40 plays compared to Apopka's 12. And the reason for that was on Wakaiva received the opening kickoff and then Terrell Weathers fumbled. Apopka took over at the 22. They needed four plays, two rushes, and two passes. <laughs> and they scored a touchdown to take the 7 nothing lead. They then got the ball back, held Wakaiva to three and out, got the ball back, and scored on a 45-yard touchdown pass. Uh, that was uh, Tyson Davidson to Jordan Wright, a very beautiful play executed by Apopka and drawn up. And suddenly it was 14 to nothing, only four plays into this game, and 67 yards have been gained by Apopka. Since then, though, Wakaiva has gone on two drives. The first 14 plays, 95 yards. The second, 67 yards and nine plays. And that reduced Apopka to only one complete possession. Uh, that was six plays. And, and then they had to kick the ball. And, of course, they had the ball on one last play before the first half ended. And that's how you get that disparity. Again, 150 yards for Wakaiva as we begin the second half. 78 for Apopka, but Apopka with the 14-13 to 13 lead. 
And again, as you said, Mark, uh, certainly in terms of yardage gain per play and the number, uh, much more efficient for Apopka. But Wakaiva finding its sea legs, if you will, and finding its game uh, with those two long drives to cut the lead to 14-13. to 13. Malachi Davey has the reception of the opening kickoff of the second half. Of course, Apopka won the toss and deferred to the second half. So they have the opening possession here of the third quarter, and they will start it from their own 26-yard line. Yeah, and also want to point out, Mark, too, uh, the difference right now, a problem they've had all season as that's Roberts takes the handoff. He tries the middle, slams ahead. It will be a short distance, but a missed PAT by Nate Fritchley is the difference right now in that 14-13 to 13 score. Roberts on the carry. James Mixon has the stop after a gain of one. It brings up second and nine for the darters from their own 27-yard line. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's been really a, a different story for each team. Apopka scoring quick and decisively on big plays. Wakaiva scoring slow and methodically on long drives. And yeah, I, I don't know if uh, you necessarily say slow. Uh, that's just their style. But certainly methodically and systematically as another short game, trying that right side burst through the defensive line, having none of it. Kingston Shaw on the carry. Aaron McRae, among others, in on the stop. And no gain on the play. So that will bring up third and a long nine for the darters from their own 27. Yeah, first time tonight someone other than Roberts has carried the ball. So we began this contest talking about the playoffs, uh, as it should be when you get a geographical rivalry, playoff implications, playoff weight involved as third and six now. And Davidson lines them up, one back set. And he's got some time, now steps up, only his sixth pass of the game. The fifth pass, actually, it's completed, but taken down immediately. Great defense in the secondary by Wakaiva. Davison on the throw to Isaac Knight. Jabari Smith is there immediately to make the stop. And that puts the ball at the 37-yard line, close to first down yardage, and it is indeed a blue darter first down. Okay, well, thought, thought they had stopped him. Thought the defense had stopped Popka about a yard short. That's something else, too. Only four passes thrown by Davidson. And now they go back to the handoff. And I believe, again, that's Roberts. Watkins. No <laughs> more the stop. Uh, the carry. Davion Watkins has the TFL and a fist pump afterward. So Popka, Coach Ralston going to. Somebody other than Roberts, a couple different players, Morgan and Shaw taking a turn at carrying the ball. So second, second. and a long 10 coming up for Apopka yeah, as Davison no lines game. up for the snap. Man in motion. And a soft toss over the middle, and that goes nowhere into no man's land. Good pressure. Again, the defensive line bursting through and disrupting. Pass falls incomplete. Third and a long 10 coming up for the Blue Tartars. So want to take a moment to, uh, while we got some time here, congratulate the Apopka Blue Tartars men's bowling team. Yesterday they captured their sixth overall state championship, first since 2017. So they've won six in 10 years now. A three-day event going on at Boardwalk Bowl down at the corner of East Colonial and Dean Road. And uh, they really rolled through through that uh, meet to the state championship and really proved they were the best team with no questions. That's a penalty on Wakaiva offsides, and that will cut it to third and five. As the ball is now at the 42 of Apopka, Davidson lines them up. Three receivers to the right. That's the near sideline, one on the far sideline, and that's something a little bit different under Rawson. Seeing more passing. And this time, though, they're not going to get it off. As down goes Davidson, and he goes down hard. Davidson tackled by Sincere Edwards for a sack. Edwards. And that's a phrase we've heard several yes, times this Edward, season. Edwards, the UCF commit, certainly a D1 prospect, and there he shows uh, exactly 
that he's a D1 prospect, not only getting the sack, not only wrapping up Davidson and not giving him nowhere to run, nowhere to pass, but doing it in a critical moment. Uh, that first possession, so, so important. You certainly can gain some momentum. Even if you don't score, you can establish some field position, and that's not going to happen this time thanks to the Wakaiva defense and Sincere Edwards completing their stop. Punt is away, courtesy of Michael Wells, and it rolls to a stop with no return at the Mustang 25-yard line. They'll take over from there with first and 10. So score remains 14 to 13, 759 remaining, Baptiste Orthodontic Stadium, the site of this playoff implication game. Of course, this is the Tater Bowl, unofficially, officially the Mayor's Cup. And Wakaiva needing a win to get into the playoffs, and even the record of 5-5, five and five, that's Weathers, who lowered the shoulder, made some contact, but the Apopka defense does not give. Terrell Weathers stopped by Jordan Wright. Of course, Wright scoring the second touchdown. He goes both ways. And now we mentioned it when we started this half. Really, Apopka, the team that scores more quickly, more... Uh, definitively with more highlight uh, feel to it. Wakaiva, more of a methodical, systematic, matriculate the ball down the field, as Hank Stram would say. Flag and, on the plane. And this certainly is not going to help the cause. Yeah, this is certainly going to be a false start. As you like to say, Mark, a donation to the Apopka cause. Prior to the snap, false start. Called against the Mustang offense. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot. And a replay of second down. So that five yard gain goes right back to the original line of scrimmage. And uh, Neil, a moment ago, you referred to the unofficial affectionate name that we have for this game, the Tater Bowl. If you're wondering why we call it that, uh, of course, if you live here, you may already know this, but Apopka comes from the seminal word Ahapopka, which means potato eating place. And thus the Tater Bowl. And now you've learned something for the day. Yes. And. We got a stoppage here. So as we get the stoppage, uh, going back to the playoff, for Apopka, it's very simple. They're actually already in the playoffs. Uh, they won the Class 4M District 2 Championship. They went 3-0. and They defeated Seminole on Tuesday, a 24-23 victory. So they are playing mostly for seeding right now. They come in number two in Region 1, three overall, all classes. As we go back to the pass, it's Davis, the fake handoff to Phileas, and give Apopka good uh, cover, uh, secondary coverage credit. Even if that ball was caught, it was going to be a short game. Pass intended for Joshua Bennett is incomplete. Reggie McBride had the coverage for the darters, and that will bring up third and ten. For the Mustangs from their own 25-yard line. And just one other note, uh, Apopka, even though they beat Seminole, they're actually behind Seminole in the FHSAA rankings. Again, one one position behind them. Again, Apopka, number two in Region 1, and that's far more important. I'll explain that in a minute. Overall, the entire state, and again, I'm sorry, it's Class 4M. They are number three. And this is Weather shakes off the tackle and motors up. Does gain some yardage, but again, not close to the first down. And so Wakaiva suffers the same fate as Apopka, a three and out to begin the second half. A gain of three on the carry will bring up fourth and seven, and the Mustangs will have to kick it away. Now for uh, Wakaiva, as we will wait the punt... They come in despite the 4-5 and five record in Region 1. They are the seventh seed. This is Putnam, and he gets that punt off. It's a pretty yep. good one. Uh, Barely avoids Edwards. the block by Davey, but since he did get it off. Does take an Apopka bounce, not necessarily in terms of it rolling back towards Wakaiva's side, but it just died once it hit the ground at the 49. Putnam's punt will roll out of bounds just inside Wakaiva territory at the 46-yard line, and Apopka will take over from there. But first, we've reached the midpoint of the third quarter, and so we will pause for an official timeout. Still a one-point ball game. No score as of yet in the second half, and the 14-13 score from halftime remains.
Baptiste Orthodontic Stadium, the site home of the Wakaiba Mustangs in this Mayor's Cup, the Crosstown Geographical rival. And Apopka with the 14 to 13 lead. The difference right now, Nate Fritchley missed a PAT. Wakaiba's second touchdown with uh, less than half a minute before halftime. And Apopka takes over possession. And before we get the first playoff, a penalty. And it's against Wakaiva. Flag on the play. I'm Neil Fisher, Mark Barchi, the other voice, who's the public address announcer, as well as the sports information director. Offsides called against the Mustangs. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot and replay. Uh, first down. So, Neil, um, Wakaiva has certainly been better in this game than we have seen them earlier in the season about those dead ball um, emotional uh, mental lack of focusers. We haven't seen the big penalties like unsportsmanlike conduct, late hit, personal foul, etc. Yeah, Apopka but... attacks the middle of that lineup and Rommel Smith, the cornerback, loses his helmet and he'll have to come out for at least one play. That is an official rule throughout all levels of football. When you lose your helmet, you do have to go to the sideline for one play. Only six penalties, uh, to your point, Mark. But again, it's not just the amount of penalties. It's when you commit those penalties. And on first down, it is a very big penalty because it gives them momentum. And instead of first and ten, you're looking at first and five. Gain of two on the play. Second and three coming up for the darters. Out of the full stack. Low snap and no going nowhere. The defensive line crashes the left, right side of the offensive line. Caleb Hicks on the carry. Joshua Bennett is there to make the TFL and the sack, and that'll pull the ball back two yards to the 40-yard line, third and five, coming up for the Darters. So it's worth noting that that is Hicks uh, that took that snap for the Darters. Yes, his first, I believe that's his first action tonight. Of course, he's listed as a quarterback running back, and now they're going to go on that right side and get the first down. That was the Roberts, their featured running back, skipping and sloshing through. Not a lot of room allowed by the defensive line, but Roberts making his way through just enough. Uh, actually, no, uh, he is just short. Gain of three on the play by Roberts, and that'll bring up fourth and two for the darters. And this is in high school football, unless you have an incredible college-bound kicker, this is kind of no man's land in high school football. It's too far into Mustang territory to make a punt really worthwhile, but it's also too far to make a field goal realistic. And Apopka remains in that full stack. Some coaches call it the jumbo. As you can see, it's unbalanced. All the skilled players on the left side. And I believe that Coach Rawson was just trying to get Wakaiba to jump offside. The Blue Darters will call a timeout, their first of the second half, and we'll pause here with three minutes, 56 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Still a 14-13 ball game. The Darters lead the Mustangs by one midway through the third. I'd like to thank Dr. Elizabeth Davis with Orlando Health Jew and Orthopedic Institute. Honored to be the team physician for Wakaiba High School on the field and off. They provide a full spectrum of orthopedic services and a multitude of specialties and subspecialties from hip, knee, and shoulder experts to orthopedic traumatology and more. Offering proven leading-edge techniques and technologies, Orlando Health Jew and Orthopedic Institute provides patients with world-class personalized care from a number of convenient locations throughout Central Florida. Learn more at orlandohealth.com slash sports. Orlando Health, choose well. For those of you here in the stadium, we want to remind you, as always, we do appreciate your assistance as we approach the fourth quarter, making sure if you are depending on a ride to get home from tonight's game, that they know where we are in the game and that they are prepared to come and collect you uh, in a timely manner after the conclusion of tonight's game so that our administrators can prepare the facility to be closed. However, because this is the Mayor's Cup, we do have a brief post-game presentation, and we do welcome and encourage you to stay for that. Fourth and two for Apopka. With the 14 to 13 lead in the third quarter, and they're going to get that first down out of that jumbo, if you prefer full stack, straight ahead rushing. And I see several of the Apopka players are saying no on the sideline, but the ref ran in clearly about a yard and a half past the first down marker. So we'll wait for the official spot here. The ball is sitting on the ground well, actually, right at the, yeah, it's at the, about the 36th, and a 36 and a half yard line so we're gonna 
And actually, it's not quite as clear cut as I originally thought, Mark. So, yeah, again, for... remember, we're sitting up in the press box. And we're a little bit slightly to the left of this play. So the angle's off. Uh, as we're waiting, though. Looks like we are indeed going to call for a measurement. And was that Jenkins who ran the ball, by the way, number three? So Wakaiva, again, uh, going back to the playoffs, on their strength of schedule, they are seventh in Class 3M Region 1. And, yes, a pop, or Wakaiva does come up with the stop. And big, big, big play for that Wakaiva defense. Could be a turning point in this Mayor's Cup, the 2022 edition. Apopka with the 14-13 lead. Wakaiva with the opportunity to go back ahead. Mustangs make the stop on fourth down, and that turns the ball over on downs to Wakaiva. Ball now at the 36-yard line, first and 10 Mustangs. So Wakaiva... Still a ways to go, though. 64 yards to the touchdown. As you heard Mark say, first and 10 from the Apop uh, Wakaiva, 36. And this is certainly not going to help at all. And the defensive line, Apopka, comes up with the big play right after Wakaiva. And that certainly is a mark of a championship team. Again, Apopka, three-time champion. They've gone to the state championship final six times, 25 Playoff appearances, consecutive playoff appearances. And so, again, uh, when I talked to Coach Schwartz on Monday, he mentioned, obviously, this is a big game because it's the rivalry. Five miles separate the two teams as Davis lines the team up. Ball now at the 25. And Davis under pressure again. Heat, this time he avoids, throws, finds a Cut. man down the sideline, hauled in, and a big, big play into Apopka territory in a first down. Joshua Bennett with a Mustang first down. Boy, he turned something, nothing into something there. Yeah, and there you see the maturity of Davis. We started off the season talking about Davis's maturity between seasons, but we right. haven't talked about it in the last four or five games, and now it reappears. And now we have an officials conference happening at the 40-yard line, and the players not moving down the field with the enthusiasm that I would have expected. Uh, and I do, now that I'm looking carefully, see a penalty marker near the Wakaiva sideline. I didn't see it at first. The players were standing in the way. So this might not be as good of news as yeah. Wakaiva had hoped. Yeah, it, it goes from, uh, wow, we've made some forward progress, gotten ahead to a kick in the gut, donkey kick. So while we wait, Wakaiva again in Class 3M Region 1, they are the seventh-seeded team despite the 4-5 and five record. Uh, that is because they have the 18th, highest strength of schedule in the entire state, in the entire class, not just Region 1. They are 19th overall in the entire Class 3, and that's across the entire state. So if they win tonight, they certainly would clinch a playoff berth. I don't foresee them dropping as the call Sideline is Sideline warning is called against the Mustangs. Now, that in and of itself wouldn't be a penalty. Well, yeah, it wouldn't be a penalty. They wouldn't lose yardage. So did something else go wrong on that play besides the sideline infraction? Well, the refs uh, looks like they're still trying to figure that question out. But so back to the playoffs. Again, if Wakaiva wins tonight, they are seventh coming into this game in Region 3. 3M1. I don't foresee them dropping in the standings if they win, especially since Apopka is, they would get a lot of points in defeating Apopka. Again, a point system is used for the rankings as it does look like this catch is going to stand. And other than the sideline warning, there was nothing wrong with that play, and so we will move the chains. And the ball 
Actually, after, it's at midfield. Yeah, after the adjustments made by the officials, it will be at midfield. And so, so the Mustangs will have the ball there. That will be a 25-yard gain, and I believe the only explanation I can think of is that Bennett did step out of bounds at midfield right at the 50-yard line. So uh, to finish off my thought about the playoffs, we use a point system now, the FHSAA rankings. It's based on the record of each team, the opponent's record, and the record of the opponent's opponents. And so if you beat Apopka, who, again, is ranked number three overall in Class 4M, you certainly should not drop in the standings. Payne almost flinched there, but managed to uh, recover before the ball was snapped and to avoid the offsides. We had more helmets flying. And that reminded me of a Charlie Brown cartoon there as he saw the dust kicked up and uh, three or four defensive linemen break through that offensive line. Loss of one on the play brings up second and 11 for the Mustangs from their own 49-yard line. So after all the conversation and discussion among the refs, Wakiva goes back to work in pretty anticlimactic, a one-yard loss. Uh, maybe lost some of their momentum. Ball now at their own 49-yard line, second and 11 in this Tater Bowl, Crosstown rivalry, officially known as the Mayor's Bowl. Playoff implications, as we just explained. More so for Wakiva than Apopka. They need a win to get into the playoffs. Even their records at 5-5. Five and five. They trail 14 to 13 as they're operating against the 4-3 defense and this handoff straight up the middle. Weathers dumped about a yard past the line of scrimmage and that'll bring up third and 10. Terrell Weathers on the carry, he picks up two yards and that makes third and a long nine for the Mustangs from just inside Darter territory. So Wakiva trailed 14 to nothing. They gave up two touchdowns, four plays, 67 yards. They battled their way back to cut the lead to 14 to 13. And Davis fakes the handoff out of the shotgun. Now rolls right, stop, go. And we also have a penalty as Davis stays on his feet and now throws it away to live to fight another day. But that's probably a holding penalty. Pass is incomplete, thrown away by Davis, and there is a penalty marker in the backfield. Now usually those are holding penalties when they not only are behind the quarterback, but also when the play takes several seconds to develop. Of course, if you're a pop guy, then you have to decide if it is a holding penalty, do you want the 10 yards or do you want the loss of down? You make a case either way there. Yeah, I think, though, it would be more beneficial to uh, decline the penalty and force the punt, get the ball back. You have the lead, and we're not quite there yet with a minute six remaining in the third quarter, but uh, we are getting close to that territory of where it's about keeping possession and running that clock down. Personal foul called against the Mustangs. That penalty is declined. And the result of the play is fourth and ten. Okay, so one of maybe 5% of the time it's not holding. Nevertheless, though, the outcome is the same. Apopka would rather have the loss of down than the yardage from that. Right. And uh, force the sit punting situation and get the ball back. As you see, Noah Putman, number 15, running out onto the field. So 14 to 13 was your score at halftime. It's still 14 to 13. Keep in mind that Apopka has already won a game by one point once this week. Yeah. Uh, again, we started this broadcast talking about Seminole, and Putman goes down. And it and, is blocked. Oh, uh, it was blocked. So an ugly play for Wakaiva, and certainly he cannot afford that. The defense will have to come up big again. Noah Putnam's. Uh, kick is blocked by Carl Ferguson, and that means that the Darters will have advantageous field position from their own 45-yard line to start their next offensive possession, make it the 44. And also want to take a minute to thank and acknowledge uh, Keith Dickerson. Uh, he's the head of the broadcast production department and his students to handle the video aspects of all, yeah. all the broadcasts that you see. And I'm going to put him on microphone here for a second to acknowledge the crew tonight. As Apopka begins its possession at the 44 in short gain again, Robertson going left. Yeah, just a quick shout-out. we got uh, Christina Wright, uh, John Lameau, Vinny Henderson, Ernia Albert, 
And uh, got Daniela Tenorio running around here somewhere and Andre Alacock. So uh, thanks, Mr. Barchi, Mr. Fisher, and everybody involved. It's been fun. Yeah, and uh, again, if you just tuned in, that was Keith Dickinson uh, giving some credit to our personnel, uh, the students of the Broadcast Production Department, Wakaibu, who handled the video aspects. I'm Neil Fisher, Mark Barchi, the other voice. He's our public address announcer as well as the sports information director. No gain on that last play. Brings up second and ten. And they'll continue. Apopka keeping the ball on the ground. And, well, it looked like it was going to be about a one-yard gain, Mark. And it, I think they got four out of it. As I believe that was Roberts just shoved the line forward. Tyson Davison on the keeper. And that pulls the ball up near midfield uh, officially at the 49 yard line and it'll bring up third and five as we have run out the time on the third quarter so a scoreless third quarter leaves us exactly where we found ourselves at halftime it's a one point ball game 14 to 13 the mustangs trail the darters by one with 12 minutes left to play here in the 16th installment of the apopka mayor's cup back with more from Baptiste Orthodontic Stadium in just a moment. 14 to 13. And for those of you here in the stadium, we'd like to let you know that hot dogs are now buy one, get one. Uh, so you can get a great deal on hot dogs at the concessions uh, for visitors, building 10 behind you for the home side, uh, building nine to your left. Two for one hot dogs available for the rest, and well, while they last. And for those of you listening online on our online broadcasts, well, you'll have to find your own hot dogs. And we begin the fourth quarter in the 2022 Tater Bowl, if you prefer the official name, Mayor's Cup. Our mayor will deliver that to the winning team when this game is over. 14 to 13, Apopka in the lead with the ball, facing third and five. Yes, I do Playoff have, implications for both teams. I have confirmation that Brian Nelson is in the house. And it's a first down for Roberts. A little stop and go, juke and jive, but there is a flag right Roberts next on to the, the carry 50. And a penalty marker down at the 50-yard line. Yeah, it's about three feet from the Wakaiva sideline and about a foot on the Wakaiva side. Holding, called against the Blue Darter offense. That's a 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul and a replay third down. And so that explains why Roberts was able to turn the corner and pick up the first down yardage. So again, holding is not a definitive amount. It's from where the penalty occurred. You move the ball 10 yards back and now the ball is going to be placed, ball placed at the 40 yard line. So Popka needs to get all the way to the Wakaiba 41. So you're looking at third and 19 now. That's a 14-yard penalty from the previous line of scrimmage. Lined up, one back set. And Davidson runs forward, but nowhere to go. As Edwards, the UCF commit, comes up with his second big play, closing off that gap and dumping Robertson for a short gain on third down. Robertson on the carry, Edwards on the stop, and that puts the ball at the 38 yard line, and it brings up fourth and 15 for the Darters. So at halftime, talked about as we get the punt, and this is Wells, Michael Wells. We'll get back to uh, the third quarter recap in a minute. That's Ganey who gets away from the ball. He's going to let it roll. Takes a blue dart or a popka bounce and goes out of bounds. So got about an extra 10 yards. Wakaiva will be starting at their own, I believe, 25. Down by a point, 14 to 13, as we just began the third quarter. Wall is spotted after the punt at the 27-yard line. Wakaiva takes over from there with first and 10. Beautiful night at Baptiste Orthodontic Stadium, about 70 degrees, slight wind, no clouds in the sky. Couldn't ask for a better night to play a rivalry game. Five miles separating these two schools, Wakaiva on the southeast side, right next to 429, Apopka on the northeast side by the other side of 429. Weathers picks up that 
handoff and doesn't Weathers have anywhere to go. Trying to pound ahead on that left side. Weathers on the carry and Reggie McBride is in on the stop. A gain of two on the play brings up second and a long eight for the Mustangs. And so at halftime with that 14 to 13 lead, which the score is still, Apopka has run only 12 plays and gained 78 yards. Wakaiva gained 150 and ran 40 yards. Now a much different scenario in the second in that third quarter. Both teams uh, had two series, two possessions, and three series of downs. As this is going to be another short game. Weathers bouncing to the outside, the left side of the defensive line, having none of it. Terrell Weathers on the carry. The stop is made. For the Blue Darters by number 20, that's Antoine Robinson. Tackle just inside the sideline. And that is a loss of two on the play. Takes the ball back to the original line of scrimmage. Third and ten. So when all was said and done in the third quarter, only one first down gained by both teams. And now another third down conversion attempt. This one by Wakaiba, third and 10. As you hear Mark say from their own 27, out of the shotgun, Davis takes the snap. He's got time, now the pocket collapses, rolls left, throws, incomplete. Went through the hands of Gay, but he would have been taken down short of the first down anyway. Pass is incomplete intended for Anthony Gay, and it'll bring up fourth and ten. Still consequential, though, Neil, because now you're punting yeah, for about nine possession. yards farther back than you were and you're exactly right. And Wakaiva, again, has had, uh, obviously, um, Wakaiva's punting unit with Noah Putnam uh, very different than the... Uh, Popkos. Right, and also with, different than the kickoff with and Wells. field goal and PAT unit from... Uh, yeah, we just saw on their last possession they were forced to punt and the punt was blocked. Uh, this one is not blocked this time. Putnam hits the deck, no call, no flag. And this time, all things considered, and especially considering the last punt was blocked, I'd say that was a successful play. Punt and rolls out of bounds at the 45-yard line, and the, the darters will take over from there with first and 10. And, yeah, it's uh, it's too bad there that that punt, if it had been about three yards to the left, it would have stayed in bounds and then taken a Wakaiva bounce for about another 10 yards. But, nevertheless, it did just touch out of bounds before it bounced back into uh, the sideline, and so that Apopka will get a little benefit there. However, we have some consultation going on with the officials in the sideline. So we've talked about the rankings all night, Mark. Of course, uh, that's because the playoffs. Also want to point out that you have four regions and all eight teams qualify according to the region. It's not 32 overall. And now we see our referee coming over to Wakaiva's side and conferring here. And as we get ready, okay, as the teams come back out, but in class 3M again, that's Wakaiva's uh, class. They are seventh in region one, 19th overall. Uh, Edgewater is number one. Jones is number two. Of course, they're both members of District 3 with Wakaiva. Oviedo's third. And Horizon is 21st in the class rank, but more importantly, number eight in that in Region 1. And there was a penalty on the play. It was five yards against Apopka, so we will retake that punt. I didn't get and, a chance to see what the penalty was. I assume it was some form of offsides. And to finish my thought, uh, that means... And now it's over his head, and Putnam Putnam's can't get it back run. in. And that that five-yard penalty against Apopka is the best thing that happened to him all night. Yeah, and that Putnam was number 11, Call taking down Putnam. Putnam unable to reel in the snap, and... The darters will take Wakaiva down deep in their own territory. That'll be over on downs, and now it will be first and 10 from the Wakaiva 17-yard line. And gosh, you I, I don't know whether Wakaiva had the option to decline that penalty, but if they did, I bet they'd like to go back in time about 15 disaster, seconds and disaster. change their mind. So again, just want to conclude the thought about the rankings. All four teams in Class 3M District 3 
as I believe that was Robertson taking the quarterback draw. Short gain up the middle. All four teams in Class 3 on District 3, as of right now, before the end of the last game, are in the playoffs. Davidson on the keeper, and there's no gain on that play. It brings up second and 10 from the Wakaiba 12-yard line. So now, Neil, the, we're having a flashback to the beginning of the game. Yeah, and that's how... Apopka scored off of the first possession ending. Wakaiva had the possession to begin the uh, the first possession of the game. Got a 10-yard gain. Uh, Terrell Weathers looked good. You know, way you want to start the game, best possible start. Then he gains another five yards three or four plays later and fumbled the ball at the Apopka 22-yard line. And four plays later, Apopka puts the ball into the end zone on a pass to take a 7-0 lead, and they've led ever since then. Davidson again, trying that right side, trying to pound ahead, barrel ahead. It will be a two-yard game, maybe three, and that will bring up third and long. Davidson on the carry for the darters, and that will bring the ball to the 12-yard line. Third and five coming up for Apopka. So actually a little bit more than originally looked like. So now Coach Rawson uh, might be also thinking about the point situation. Field goal makes it a four-point game, which means Wakaiva needs to score a touchdown. Flag on the play. Illegal substitution is called against the Blue Darters. That's a five-yard penalty from the previous spot and a replay of third down. And you saw, if you were looking at the corner of your screen, you saw that you had a blue darter that was running in running in and running out. And yeah. Confusion on that far sideline. Obviously, you know, Apopka has the momentum advantage here for the simple reason that, you know, if, if we stalemate, a stalemate goes to Apopka because they do have that one-point advantage on the missed PAT. But if they can go up by a full score instead of just one point, that obviously solidifies their position, and that five-yard penalty certainly did them no favors. Yeah, that was about a four-yard game, maybe even five. Uh, as Apopka went for that sweep on the right side, reminiscent of the single wing tee days under Darlington. Right on the carry, and another penalty marker is on the on the field. And we're going to an officials conference here. That is holding called against the Blue Darters. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. And a replay of third down. So uh, Apopka taking a page out of Wakaiva's playbook. And as you like to say, that's certainly a contribution to the Wakaiva cause. And now the ball is at the... 28 yard line so you're looking at a 45 yard field goal yeah i just actually heard uh, of course our broadcast partners from salem radio are sitting right next to us i just heard roger franklin williams say apopka's penalizing themselves out of field goal range and he's exactly right because again you know even a, a field goal then puts wakaiva in a position where they have to get a touchdown so that would still be valuable up. here and that is going to bring the series to an end Davison on the carry, Kadar Cardinal on the tackle for loss, and a late penalty marker is on the field. So and somebody's he, about to steal defeat from the jaws of victory. Yeah, and again, I realize it's fourth down, and the penalty, is it going to be against, well, they're moving towards the Wakaiba end zone. Now they stop, the refs that are, and Wakaiba's moving too. It's Yeah, it's against Wakaiba. After a great sack and a great play, momentum seized. So three. Twelve men on the field is called against Wakaiva. What a break for Apopka because that was otherwise going to be a huge uh, loss, loss for Apopka. Yeah, and again, and now, the, now the drive is alive again. Well, again, momentum was going to shift back to Wakaiva. And after all that said and done, it's still third down. It's not fourth. Yeah, we, it feels like it's been third down for quite a while now. Well, three consecutive penalties. And, and this one, that, though. That also negates the two penalties that Apopka committed on this series, too. Ball at, I believe, the 12-yard line. 
Watts trying to slap through that left side of the line. And that will not be a first down, only a couple yards. I believe that was Davidson who, out of the quarterback draw. Ferguson on double handoff there, and that puts the ball at the 12-yard line and brings up fourth and five for Apopka. So now Apopka has options. They could go for it on fourth and five. That's not what they're going to do here, though. They are going to go for the field goal. This is a much more manageable field goal than it would have been without that 12 men on the field penalty. But in any case, here comes Hayden Kosicki with an opportunity to put Wakaiva in a position where they will have to get a touchdown. And... and no. No good. Wide left. So Apopka with an opportunity unable to turn it into fruition. Field goal attempt is wide left and no good. And that will turn the ball over to the Mustangs. So Wakaiva catches a break after they gave Apopka a break. Yeah, that was just a series of breaks. Do you want to take the break? Do you want to take the break? No. Each of these teams being very generous here midway through the fourth quarter to each other, but that takes us to the midpoint of the fourth quarter, and it means it's time for our fourth and final official timeout. Still no change in the score. The Mustangs will have the ball at their own 20-yard line when we come back from this final water break. And the score remains the same because the field goal was missed from 29 yards. We'd like to remind you we have Mayor Nelson in the house and we've got some hardware to hand out at the end of today's game. So while we do remind you, if you are depending on a ride, to give them a call and let them know we're headed into the last six minutes, we do invite you to stay with us for about an extra five minutes after the game ends and we will have our presentation of the Mayor's Cup for the 16th time in this Crosstown rivalry. Back to live action here at Baptiste Orthodontic Stadium here in South Apopka. Uh, again, the 16th installment of this crosstown rivalry between the Blue Darters and the Mustangs. Apopka, of course, with a very long history. And the first snap is over the head of Davis. He manages to get it back under control, but he is going to be punished with probably about 10 yards. Now, line of scrimmage was the 12-yard line. That's going to certainly take the ball inside the 5. No, that line uh, of scrimmage the 20, was the 20. 20 excuse yeah. me. Yeah, Loss of right. 8. On the muffed snap, Davis is able to keep possession for the Mustangs, but at the cost of eight yards, second and 18 coming up for Wakaiva. So the missed field goal was from 29 yards. The line of scrimmage was 12. And, of course, if it's inside the 20-yard line, the missed field goal, then the team that gets possession starts at the 20. And then that first play by Davis, and that's where we are now. And Davis is going to go back to the air on... Unhindered and uh, good play by the secondary number Josh, 24. Well, then at the intended receiver, Reggie McBride, on the coverage for the darters. That falls incomplete and it brings up third and 18 for the Mustangs from their own 12. And as you just heard Mark say, I'm Neil Fisher, Mark Barchi, our public address announcer, as well as our other play by play man. What was a promising turn of events for Wakaiba with that missed field goal. They are now not only looking at third and long, but third third and 18. So more than eight yards plus the standard distance as we now dip, approach five minutes, 14 to 13, Apopka with the lead. Miss Field, Miss PAT the difference. Davis goes to the air, finds his man Gay, who hauls in the ball. It'll be first and 10 at the Wakaiba, 35, and a big play when it was needed. Credit Davis with the perfect pass to Gay. Davis to Gay for a Mustang. First down. Ball spotted at the 35-yard line. 23-yard game for Wakaiba. And now you can hear the intensity picking up at Baptist Orthodontic Stadium. The fans certainly acknowledging the effort. Much better position out of the shadow of the end zone as Davis hands off to Phileas. He skips, he hops. And turns it upfield at the line of scrimmage and only gained two, four and a half minutes remaining. This is the 2022 Mayor's Cup, informally known as the Tater Bowl. Here in Apopka, Wakaiba with possession of the ball, trailing Apopka by a 15 to 13, or 14 to 13 score. 
Nathan Fritchley missing a PAT when Wakaiva scored its second touchdown with less than half a minute remaining in the first half. The difference, Wakaiva trying to pull out the victory and earn a spot in the playoffs with a 5-5 five and five record. The fake pitch, and the first defender buys it, not the second, and his buddies come in and wrap up Davis. And it'll be another short gain, about one yard, maybe two. Band continues to play as we are now at 345 remaining. So Wakaiva needing to get to the 45-yard line. And with three and a half minutes remaining, you might see Coach Schwartz roll the dice on fourth down, regardless of what happens on this play if they do not get that first down. Ball at the Wakaiva 37. Davis hands off. The sweep to the right side. And a first down. Davis with a handoff to Joshua Bennett. So the wide receiver goes in motion and uses that motion to turn up field. That puts the ball at the 50-yard line. 13-yard gain for Bennett. Gain of 13 for Bennett on the play, and it brings up first and 10 for the Mustangs. So the Wakaiva defense... Namely, Cesar Edwards and David Watkins have come up with several big plays on the defensive side and now the offense as we're going to get another one here on first down. That's Phileas runs over a couple of coaches. Tyree Phileas on the carry. Now that takes the ball out to the 40, no, make it the 42-yard line and it'll bring up second and two for the Mustangs. Eight-yard gain, ball in a popka territory. 2.58 remaining, clock continues to, to tick away. Hayden Kosicki unable to convert on a 29-yard field goal attempt on Apopka's last possession, which gave up Wakaiva the possession. And now you're looking at a one-point difference instead of four. Davis back to the air. He goes deep over the middle and overthrows everybody. Pass intended for Kevel Cooper. Falls incomplete. Could hear the crowd rising in anticipation, the ooing and eyeing. A beautiful night with 2.33 remaining from Must Baptist Orthodontic Stadium. That'll bring up third and two for the Mustangs from their own 42-yard line. Couldn't ask for a better night for a geographical rivalry with playoff implications. A pocket playing for positioning. Wakaiva needs to win to get in, and this will certainly help as Phileas busts through the right side behind the tackle and guard. First down. Tyree Phileas on the carry. That uh, puts the ball at the 36-yard line, and it's just enough for Mustang. First down. Six-yard game for Phileas. 2.15 remaining. Wakaiva goes back to work. Davis out of the shotgun. Looking left, now he's going to run, escapes the tackle, makes contact and lunges ahead for about another two. Tyree Davis yards. on the QB keep. Davis making something out of nothing, a five-yard gain, maybe four yards. Nonetheless, keeping that ball moving forward. Now at the 34 of Apopka. So actually it's just two yards. And a timeout on the field. Apopka still holding on, nursing that 14 to 13 lead. 145 remaining from Baptist Orthodontic Stadium in the Tater Bowl. The Mustangs request their first timeout of the second half. Still a 14-13 game. The Mustangs have the ball in Darter territory at the 34-yard line with a minute 45 remaining in the game. We would like to remind you, for those of you here in the stadium, that for the safety of our players, coaches, and officials, no fans are permitted on or inside the perimeter of the track at any time, including after the conclusion of tonight's game. However, we will have the presentation of the Apopka Mayor's Cup. Mayor Nelson is here, and we look forward to bringing that to you right after the conclusion of tonight's game. But again, we do ask all of our fans to remain outside the track fence perimeter for the duration of that presentation and during the post game. So Wakaiva goes back to work. Tyree Davis lines up the Mustangs. Wakaiva, H-back, hands off to Weathers. 
tries to slam him forward, and he'll gain about two yards. Tyree Phileas on the carry. No gain on the play. Third and ten coming up for the Mustangs from their own 36-yard line. Wakaiva needing to win this game to get into the playoffs. They are currently the number seven seed in Class 3M Region 1. Davis swings it over to the left. A screen, hit, hop, and it's going to be a first down. Picking his way. Tyrell Ganey spinning for extra yardage to pick up the Mustang. First down. Ganey picking his way and avoiding three would-be tackles as there's now one minute remaining. Ball is at the 31-yard line of Apopka. Excuse, the 21-yard line. Back to the air, Davis into the end zone, the right side, middle, and overthrows his man. Pass intended for Keval Cooper, falls incomplete. And that'll bring up second and 10 for the Mustangs. So ball remains at the Apopka 21 yard line. You're now looking at a 38 yard field goal attempt. And remember, the reason that this is a 14 to 13 score, not 14 to 14, is Nathan Fritchley missed a PAT. Wakaiva scored the second touchdown with less than half a minute. And Fritchley missed. Still in the air. Davis over the middle. Finds his man. And yes, touchdown. Wakaiva 20 to 13. The pass is caught by Mustangs. Number seven, Tyrell Ganey. That uh, puts the ball at the three yard line. And we'll pause for a timeout. And timeout now taken by Apopka, their first of the second half. So, Neil, that was actually not a touchdown. It was uh, very close, though. It puts Wakaiva with first and goal. I thought uh, the refs put their hands up to indicate it was a touchdown. And you can hear the crowd, I have to admit, in 15, almost 16 years now, uh, we do not hear this intensity quite the same. Again, remember, a playoff berth for Wakaiva is on the line. They come into this game ranked seventh in Class 3M Region 1. A victory would secure that berth, and it would be their first signature victory during the Jeremiah Schwartz era. So Apopka, the ninth out of ten teams this year, ranked among the top, ranked in the Orlando Sentinel Super 16, as well as ranked among the top 15 in the max prep or the FHSAA rankings in max prep rankings. Of course, the max, the FHSAA rankings are what matters as far as the playoffs. And certainly, you're in field goal range now with 35 seconds left, ball at the Apopka three yard line. But as we have mentioned all season, field goal has been an issue. Davis. Will follow Weathers, and he has nowhere to go. Big play by number two, Nicholson. Malik Nicholson busts through in the tackle. Malik Nicholson takes down Cooper behind the line of scrimmage that pulls the ball back to the 10-yard line, and now the Mustangs will request their second timeout of the second half. So a seven-yard loss, but more importantly, only 25 seconds remaining in the ball at the 10-yard line. And as you just heard Mark say, Wakaiva forced to use his second timeout. Yeah, I mean, the good news is one way or the other, you probably aren't going to need those timeouts. There is no sequence of events here that is likely to result in a tie, so no, you might but, as well use them. <laughs> but it does uh, stunt Wakaiva's, uh, Wakaiva's momentum. Wakaiva took possession of this ball at the Apopka 20-yard line. This is the 15th play of the drive, 25 seconds remaining. Apopka with the 14 to 13 lead. They're and now Apopka will take their second timeout of the second half. Apopka with the 14 to 13 lead. Right now the difference, a missed PAT by Nathan Fritchley. Apopka scored two touchdowns on his first two possessions, needed only four plays. The first TD... Uh, Popka got possession following a fumble by Tyrrell Weathers. And then four plays later, they scored on a pass. They stopped Wakaiva on a three and out. And then a 45-yard... 
Tyson Davidson to Jordan Wright. Touchdown gave him the 14-0 lead. Of course, both PATs were good. Hayden Kosicki converting them. Wakaiba then in the second quarter putting together a 15-yard, 95-yard play and a 9-yard, 67-yard play to cut the lead to 14-13. to Fritchley missing it. Again, Wakaiba needs to win to get into the playoffs. Davis out of the shotgun. One back set, finds Ganey, and he will not be able, cannot avoid a slew of Apopka defenders coming up and putting him down 15, 14 seconds remaining. Tyrell Ganey has the completion. However, uh, Malik Nicholson and Rashad Watson are in on the stop, and now Wakaiba will spend their final timeout of the second half. So now third and goal from the 10-yard line. No gain on that. Remember, Apopka had first and 10 at the... Wakaiva had first and 10 at the three-yard line, a seven-yard loss. Davis unable to get any forward progress on a design quarterback draw. Again, we'd like to remind everyone... And now, Mark, you're also in the situation with no timeouts. You got to throw the ball. You can't run it. And you have to throw it into the end zone. And I don't, I'm not really sure if Schwartz is even thinking about a field goal. Davis takes it, throws to the corner of the end zone. Yeah, Pass is complete to, to number 10, Joshua Bennett, and the Mustangs are into the end zone. Seven seconds remaining. Bennett. Wide open, past the secondary, a stop and go move, and a popka. The mighty Blue Darters in shock as Wakaiva might have just saved their season and earned a berth into the playoffs with the 10 yard Davis to Bennett touchdown. Bennett catching it in the back of the end zone, and certainly. On what is a beautiful night for football, the Wakaiba faithful have been rewarded. They are on their feet. And Mark, this is the loudest the crowd has been all season at Baptist Orthodontic Stadium. Again, on their feet as Fritchley comes in for the PAT. And this one is good. Nathan Fritchley's try is good and the Mustangs take the lead for the first time in the game. 20 to 14 is the score now with seven seconds remaining on the clock. So Wakaiba scored 20 straight points unanswered three straight touchdowns and we've talked about it all season as you can see the cheerleaders are showing off their wares their moves of course certainly much to cheer about here at baptiste orthodontic stadium at 9 15 sudden unexpected turn of events And Neil, the last thing I want to do is leave you at this exciting moment, the most exciting moment so, of the year, but I need to get down to the fields to meet Mayor yeah. Nelson to present the cup in seven seconds of game time. So I will see you shortly. Thank you, Mark. And as I was saying, Wakaiva has played the 18th most difficult schedule in the state. That's all classifications, all schools. They took on nine opponents ranked inside the top 50 in class 3M or class 4M, the only opponent is Windermere, who is not ranked in the top 50. Uh, nine of the 10 ranked inside the top 10 of the Orlando Sentinel Super 16. Excuse me, the top 20 of the Orlando Sentinel Super 16. I'm including the others receiving votes. 
and they have yet to get that signature victory, and they might just have done it. Certainly, the odds are in their favor. Apopka with the penalty, so the ball's kicked off at the 45. Fritchley puts it into play and does exactly the best thing that he can do, kicks it out of bounds. So the Get other thing Into is the end zone for a touchback, and that means that the Darters will begin at their own 20-yard line with seven seconds remaining in the ballgame. And so scoring that touchdown as opposed to the field goal also means a six-point deficit now. Apopka has to score a touchdown. They cannot complete a long pass, say, to the 10 or 15-yard line and then kick a field goal. Also, remember, that possession started that Wakaiwi just scored on, moving the ball 80 yards on 16 plays, began at the 20-yard line of Wakaiva because of a missed field goal, a 29-yard field goal attempt going wide side by Hayden Kosicki and so now Davidson only a couple plays at the most he finds number three that is Nathan Jenkins the third who makes the reception but he goes down immediately and the celebration is on with uh, Kaiva 20 a Popka 14 in the Mayor's Cup and Mark it is now time to present that trophy during this uh, massive celebration. Oh, that's the wrong key. That's why it's not working. Okay, well, we're not going to actually present it right away. Uh, a, lot of, uh, <laughs> a lot of pandemonium down on that field. Check, check. So once again, the pass is, pass is complete, but time expires, and they're trailing the entire. So your final score: the Wakaiva seconds Mustang, remaining. The Wakaiva Mustangs twenty, the Apopka Blue 16. Darters fourteen. Three consecutive touchdowns scored by Wakaiva. To, score, to secure this victory and also a playoff berth, though even their record at 5-5, five and five, Apopka will fall to 7-3. and three. They did clinch a playoff berth at the District 4A, 4M District 2 champion uh, Tuesday by defeating Seminole. One, and again, we apologize. Uh, things are gotten a little crazy here. Uh, we are having some technical difficulty. My partner, Thank Mark you. Barchi. Test, test is down on the field he will be handing the microphone over to brian nelson the mayor who presents the cup he'll be the mc of that and now are we ready mark the mustang the mustangs take a 20 to 14 winners in the 16th installment of the Mayor's Cup. Don't, don't. We'll have Mayor Nelson here to present the Mayor's Cup. It's a moment. So as Mark makes his way out to center, yes, yes, yes. where the Mayor's Cup will be presented again by Mayor Brian Nelson, and that's why this is officially called the Mayor's Cup. Uh, please remember we are Check. having some technical Check. difficulties. You can hear that. But nonetheless, Wakaiva pulling off the upset. They lost five of their five previous losses by a combined 30 points. And off. now to present the Mayor's I'm please welcome Mayor of Apopka, Mr. Brian Nelson. Hey, 
And so... If the Rams is going to carry, they're allowed to try. Can hear the chant down what there. What a great... Seven seconds to go. Okay, so we do apologize for the technical difficulties okay. on the audio side. Unfortunately, uh, Mark and Brian Nelson, the mayor, cutting out. But nonetheless, uh, you get the gist of what just happened. What an happened. amazing game out okay, here today, now folks. we uh, are going to go down coming Coach back Nelson, from a Brian 14 Nelson. point deficit. Give it up for Coach Schwartz and the Wekaba Mustangs. Thank you, Mayor Nelson. The Mustangs will take the 16th installment of the Mayor's Cup. So once again, from Baptiste Orthodontic Stadium, home of the Wakaiva Mustangs, the 16th annual Mayor Cup, unofficially known as the Tater Bowl, goes to the Wakaiva Mustangs by a 20 to 14 score. The winning drive, 16 well, Ladies plays, and gentlemen, we want to yards. thank you so much for coming out to support your Mustang and Blue Darter at Wakaiva improves to five and five. And they have just punched their ticket into the playoffs with a 20 to 14 come on. So as I was saying, uh, first again, we apologize for uh, what might seem like a very rough audio. They're not just, uh, we were having technical difficulties. Uh, our camera, I mean, uh, our microphone's cutting out, but also that caused a lot of, uh, not sure uh, what, what we were supposed to cover at the moment. But the bottom line is, from Baptist Orthodontic Stadium, uh, the first signature victory uh, of the Coach Schwartz's era, uh, 20 to 14, not only is it the first signature victory for Coach Schwartz as the head coach of Wakaiva Mustangs in his career overall, but it couldn't, have, couldn't be any more important in terms of reputation and status. Comes against the crosstown of Popka Blue Darters. They will take back the Mayor's Cup. Of course, you just saw Brian Nelson award that to Wakaiva, and now the picture is being taken down on the field. Uh, coach Schwartz front and center with that. But it also secures the first berth under Coach Schwartz into the playoffs. Mentioned this throughout the broadcast. Wakaiva came into tonight's game seventh in the Class 3M Region 1 FHSAA rankings. Of course, Max Prep also does its rankings, but the playoffs and the seedings are based on those FHSAA rankings. Um, and obviously, if you win, not only if you win are you going to stay ahead, but you're defeating the number two team in the class, uh, the number three overall team in class 3M. So those point system that they use are based on the, on the record, the opponent's record, and the opponent's opponent's record. And all that adds up to Wakaiva securing a victory. They will not drop, and they even the record at 5-5, five and five, which also not as important as the playoffs, but certainly a sign of moving in the right direction. That's a one-game improvement over last week. Uh, as you can see, Mark has joined us again in the broadcast booth. Uh, mentioned that, unfortunately, we were having some audio technicality, so you cannot you couldn't <laughs> hear him uh, yeah, the, uh, do, do his MC. The, the wireless microphone is not 
not meant to go that far, but we tried to, uh, fortunately, we were able to get a few words from Mayor Nelson onto the broadcast. He was, of course, excited. Um, you know, and of course, Wakaiva is a part of the city of Apopka. I know sometimes uh, sometimes we forget that, that Wakaiva and Apopka are, you know, now co-equal members. Wakaiva in the south portion of Apopka and, the, uh, of course, the more longstanding Apopka High School on the north side of Apopka. So Mayor Nelson is just rooting for a good game. Uh, and Apopka yeah, yeah. School is going to win every year. And this year, boy, what a thriller. I mean, Apopka now has had two amazing games in one week. Uh, the first one on Tuesday went their way. Uh, the one tonight, of course, went Wakaiva's way. But, boy, you couldn't ask for a better end cap to the season. Uh, I know, of course, Wakaiva's had a very up-and-down season with their strength of schedule. They have lost to some very tough opponents, but they do manage to pull it back to a 500 record with with, uh, you know, Neil, you and I have been talking about this the whole season, that Wakaiva is still looking for that signature yes, victory. Yes. And as you walked in, I did mention that they finally got it tonight. Uh, th- this is it. If, if none of the other victories were a signature victory, this was yeah. the one. It's a very talented Apopka team. Uh, this is an Apopka team that we look to probably make a deep run in the playoffs. And now Wakaiva, you know, Wakaiva's an underdog. They've got an uphill climb to make through the playoffs, but they very likely, unless something really unexpected happens with the points, they very likely have punched their ticket. And so they're going to have to go on the road to make it happen, but we'll see what happens for them. And, uh, you know, we also want to thank you, our listeners, listening audience and viewing audience for joining us these last uh, 11 weeks. If we've been on and off at home, it is our pleasure to bring you this coverage every week that we are at home. And uh, we also want to thank our partners at Varsity Sports Network and the NFHS Network for simulcasting our coverage. And we are looking forward to bringing you even more as we get into basketball season. And so uh, as we get ready to uh leave tonight uh just a quick recap again uh mark mentioned it was a great game did not start off that way did not look that way as a popka scored touchdowns on his first two possession uh wakaiva gave him an aid uh wakaiva fumbling on the first possession uh one play uh four plays later a pass into the end zone a seven nothing lead a three and out then for the popka defense one play 45 yards davidson to right, and Apopka had a 14 to nothing lead, not even halfway through the first quarter, but Wakaiva regathered and certainly came back, played its game, and the perfect game against an Apopka team scoring three times, two, uh, the last two possessions of the first, first half, moving the ball, fit 16 yards, 80 I mean, 16 plays, 80 yards, and then scoring with about 30 seconds before halftime on nine plays, 67 yards. And, of course, then uh, they caught a break with the missed field goal, 29 yards. They got possession at the 20-yard line, moved the ball, 16 plays, 80 yards, and scoring uh, Davis to Ganey with seven seconds remaining, a couple of big plays a 10-yard rush for Terrell Davis, and then also a Davis to Bennett pass for 18 yards, which moved the ball from the 21 to the three-yard lines. And again, the first signature victory and most likely clinching a spot in the playoffs, the first under Coach Schwartz. So, Mark, take us home after this exciting victory. Well, that concludes Season 16 of Mustang Football. Here from Baptiste Orthodontic Stadium, uh, it has been our pleasure to bring it to you. We thank you for tuning in. If you're on YouTube, please make sure you subscribe before you go. We're going to bring you lots of basketball coverage this season as well coming up in the winter. Uh, and, of course, uh, there is always a chance. You never know. Wakaiva is going to have to play at least the first round away, and they would not be probable to host any of the playoff games, but it could happen. We do want to thank, and if it does, then we will be here hosting those with you. Uh, we do want to thank Keith Dickerson and his entire program at Wakaiva TV Broadcast Production, bringing you the video aspects of our coverage here at Wakaiva. Uh, for Neil Fisher, my name is Mark Barchi, voice of the Mustangs and executive producer here of Wakaiva Sports on YouTube, NFHS Network, and Varsity Sports Network. This has been a presentation of Wakaiva High School Athletics in association with Orange Technical College, both a proud part of Orange County Public Schools. We'll see you for basketball season. Until then, good night from Baptiste Orthodontic Stadium here in South Dakota.